Hey guys, it's John, your Tennessee Flying Farmer. We're on day three of the December Bill Challenge. I'm, I've already lost track of the days. Um, it's it's just after one o'clock and I'm out here working on the airplane. So after a long day of working on the farm, we've it was feed day for the cattle. We're feeding pretty much everything now. Um, it's just the season for it. Trying to get soybeans harvested. That's ongoing, which we still like quite a few acres there and then in between all that, I've started planting wheat for next season. So winter wheat is being planted and that's, that's taking a lot of time. So anyway, get through the full day and eat supper and then I'm out here. So got a little bit accomplished, but not a whole lot. So anyway, let's get started and I'll show you what I got. This guy's good. Now here's our farmer, John Humbred. Look at that. Oh my God. That was Whoa. good. Well, you can see I've got the windshield trimmed a little more and sort of mocked back up. It's back on there for the time being. Clecoed, it's completely clecoed in now. Um, let's go to the top window. I've got the top window and especially this, this top window rib that I was working on the other day. I've kind of got both of those, I think, finalized how I want them, holes drilled in them and all that kind of stuff. Mostly cleaned up. I still like a little cleanup work, but they're really close. Um, haven't honestly really haven't got that much done today. I got this stuff Clico back up where you could see it. Only thing I've really got done, which I think I sort of talked about these brackets last time of the tediousness of building brackets to help support the rear of this top window rib. You see, it'll sit in there on, on top of that piece that runs into the rear fuselage, and then it also ties into the rib. Uh, the only way you can really see it once it's all assembled will be those two little top holes right there above that Clico. There'll be two rivets going in it from the inside. And I'm, I'm liking it. I like how smooth it is there. It's That's a really smooth transition instead of having to step and being able to see all of those cramps and that kind of stuff in the top rib. Um, anyway, I'm happy with the progress on that. It's looking pretty good. Then coming back to the front windshield, you can see it comes in. I've taken that standard piece, standard piece out of it, the piece that had the angle. I'll show you here in just a second, but I've custom fabricated this little piece. And it, granted, there's just a little bitty step here where the windshield goes down to the top window, but I don't think that'll be an issue. And I, to me, it's, it's worth it. I think it makes a smoother, really a smoother transition all the way around, especially since this rib is taken down just a little bit and doesn't have hardly as big of a curve to it. Um, let me, anyway, let me show you sort of my reasoning in, into why I decided to do it this way. What kind of prompted this whole thing? So this is the standard, uh, top transition piece that goes where my thumb is. There is the windshield. And then the back part of the, the top window secures to the back part. I think I kind of described that last time. And this piece actually sits in there kind of like that on the stock setup where that's sitting on top of the Clico, it would bolt on down to the windshield and then the, the back window goes on that angle. And that's, you know, a pretty good sized piece there. Um, so what I'm gonna show you here, I've got a ruler that is essentially the same width as the back flange on this piece. And since I've got Clicos in, I'm not gonna put the angle piece back on there to show you with it, but, so if I put this ruler I've got up here, it takes pretty much the exact same space that that rear flange would. And you guys, I've told you before, I'm going for, I'm going for a um, clean look and I want visibility. I really want a lot of visibility from this thing. So and you guys probably know from some of my flying, I look out the, the top window quite a bit. Well, anyway, as I'm sitting here in the pilot seat, I'm looking up at the, the cabin frame tube. You know, it's, it's right there. It's, it's not that intrusive, but you can see where that flange comes to. You can see the hole in the ruler there. You can see that ruler mark all the way across there. And that, that takes up, you know, a little over an inch of extra visibility that I want to be able to see out of. I just, I want it clean. So anyway, when I, I'll remove the ruler now. When you get rid of it, you have that much more visibility. So it's just, it opens it up quite a bit more in my opinion. And like I said, with visibility being one of my 
key things. I, this should be a lot more, you know, the visibility in the 701 is incredible and, and all the 750 series is incredible, but I'm really wanting to make this one just exceptional, you know, just phenomenal visibility. So, and I think I'm going to get there. I really think it's going to be pretty, pretty amazing when I get through with it. That's part of the reason I went with that center pod. It's, I want that to be really clean too. And I'm, I'm getting there with it also. I'll go into a lot more detail of it coming up here soon. So the next thing I'm working on is going to be this, getting the piece of window trim finished up. Of course, I'm going to do it a little different than what the stock setup is also. I've fabricated another little piece of trim that kind of matches what it does there. I still have to get it all finished fitting it up. You can see it's not hardly done yet, but it's it's getting close. But it'll help, it'll help fasten this window here at the bottom, secure it good just like it's done going up the side on that other piece of trim and of course the general design just has a piece of the rubber trim going all the way around the front of the window to the other side matching the same way and while i'm down here next to the front of the window i've got some pretty good news i, I think i understood the email right in that uh, i've got some tires that are shipped i've been waiting on the mains for this thing for quite a while the the stock as far as i know the stock 27 and a half inch mains for these airplanes aren't any problem to get through zenith but um, it's kind of a long story anyway. I've decided to change the wheel and brake system that I'm using for this particular airplane going with a Behringer setup. And to go with the Behringer on the Super Duty, we decided to go with a 10 inch wheel instead of what the, the standard 8 inch is for this. And to get the tires, I needed to work with the 10 inch wheels and keep them light and without going, you know, with the extreme size and all that kind of stuff. I went to a 29 inch tire instead of a 27 and a half, and the 29s have been back ordered for quite some time. So, Anyway, I'm excited for that because I've had this thing on these little baby bush wheels for quite a while. So I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of excited to get that, that finished up and get this thing up on its own feet. Anyway, to wrap up, uh, that's about as far as I've got. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll give you guys one more little secret. I've got, I've got something kind of in the works. Let's go look. So you guys know I've done a crazy amount of stuff to try to save weight here and there. I've scalloped, scalloped stuff. I've put extra lightning holes and stuff. I've trimmed every single little bit of everything I could off of this plane to, as long as I felt like I could keep it structurally sound. Um, I'm, I guess part of the reason this, this thing is dubbed the 750 SD Extreme, the extreme part of that is what I'm doing with the lightness. I, I've gone too far in. Anyway, let me show you what I've got here. I'm getting set up to do a little bit of welding and fabricating on a, a different metal. Uh, you can see I've got my, my TIG torch here and I've got a different cup and all that kind of stuff getting ready for it. The Anyway, the big thing here is this piece of metal, these couple of pieces. I've got several more, but these are the two I'm working with first. Uh, if you guys want to take any guesses to what that is, I'm not even going to tell you this round, but take a while guess. We'll talk about it the next time. So anyway, that's enough for today. I'm gonna call it call it quits in here for the night. Like I say, it's after one o'clock now, so I'm gonna take some of this stuff down and try to get a video put together for you guys, and we'll try it again tomorrow. So thank you, see ya.